Amazon has become somewhat infamous for some of their more dubious practices, for example, acquiring startups that are potential competition. But now the Wall Street Journal reports that Amazon may have scooped up data from its own sellers in order to launch competing products. That is the exact opposite that their lobbyists told Congress last July was not happening, and it's reignited calls for an investigation into the company and potential perjury charges for their lobbyists. Quick note, we have reached out to Amazon. We have yet to receive a reply. We'll update you all as soon as we do. But friend of the show, journalist David Sirota, he shares his thoughts with us via Skype. He's got a new gig to tell us a little bit about. First, David, let's start off with that. What's going on with this uh, with this newsletter? Where should everybody sign up for it? So everyone can find it at, uh, you can find it on my website, davidsirota.com or uh, right on the newsletter site, sirota.substack.com. Basically, I'm just picking up uh, some of the journalism that I left off when I went on the Bernie Sanders campaign. We're going to be doing, you know, basic reporting on the economy, um, on Washington, on corruption, all the things that I was covering beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Highly recommend it. Everybody People should definitely that. subscribe. Already what you're putting out has been invaluable. We've been incorporating it into the show. So um, thank Great. you for doing that and congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. So let's talk about this um, Amazon story. Just lay on some of the context here. What are they doing um, that people are so upset about? So Amazon's a platform to, to sell its own products, but also obviously the, the, it's a marketplace for small businesses to sell their products. In fact, small businesses now feel like they have to sell on Amazon or they're cut out of the, the, the market that they need to, need to be in. I mean, that's Amazon's market power. If you're not on Amazon, you, it's, it's hard to really compete as a small retailer business. Um, so Amazon's in a dual position of both selling its own products, but also providing a marketplace for uh, other sellers. And what the Wall Street Journal is reporting is that Amazon is using the data it's collecting about the sales that happen on its platform from third party sellers, these small businesses. It's using that information to inform its own proprietary uh, uh, retailing business for its own products. And, and the problem here is that is that essentially what it seems like is going on is that Amazon is using that data potentially to be underselling uh, and and competing with and potentially navigating business decisions in competition around these smaller these small businesses that are on its platform. So you can imagine where a small business and there's a, a couple of examples of this in the story where there's a couple of examples of of a small business putting forward an, innovate, an innovative retail product. They mentioned one a trunk organizer that was a, a, a sold really well on the platform. And Amazon effectively uh, using the data about the sales of that product on its platform to then essentially create its own competing product, price its own competing product, uh, and and potentially uh, outmaneuver the small business that had developed the product in the first place. So mm -hmm. there, essentially there's a lot of uh, antitrust monopoly issues here where if you're a small business and you come up with a product essentially what's going on now is you feel like you're obligated to be on a in a marketplace that has a essentially a, if not a monopoly a near monopoly on the seller marketplace and and in being forced to be on that that platform for for to, in order to get in front of customers you are also then forced to give over essentially data about your business to the parent company right. of the marketplace right. that can then undersell you. So it, it's it's almost like you're at the at the mercy of the owner of the marketplace that can then turn around and and try to use your data to outcompete you. Right. That's really the crazy part about this, isn't it, David? Is like not only do they take a cut of your sales, they own all of your customers' data and all of the preferences that they have, and then prioritize their own business over yours. It's blatantly anti-competitive behavior. And yet, I mean, this is not something that Congress or the FTC or anybody has yet filed an action on, despite the fact that this is happening. Is this a pattern that we've seen in Amazon in the past? Well, look, I, I, there's been a lot of complaints about how Amazon uh, put, puts and prioritizes different sellers uh, on its platform. So when people are going on to Amazon, think about it this way. When you type in, you know, you want a product out of whatever it is, you're looking for whatever product, you type in the name of the, of the, the generic name of the product, uh, you'll see, who, who you see come up as the uh, vendors for that product, that is a product, that list of an algorithm 
that has all sorts of inputs and factors in it. And, and the issue is that's ultimately Amazon's big power, right? You type in the name of the product and the first thing you may see is Amazon's own proprietary product, Amazon's own, uh, you know, labeled product. Uh, uh, and, or do you see a small business product? That decision there seems like a small thing, but as small businesses will say, that decision, what pops up on you with the consumer screen, that is everything because you're most likely to pick, you know, the top one, two or three um, uh, options that come right. up for you. And so the question is, how is Amazon using that enormous power to millions and millions of customers? Is it using it to preference itself? Is it using it to um, deprioritize uh, certain small businesses that that aren't ponying up what it wants them to pony up in terms of in, in terms of revenue for them. That is where Amazon's huge market power really is. And the question is, you know, in a in a in a so-called free market capitalist society, the the marketplace itself is supposed to be an equal playing field. Right. But when you have a private actor that can tilt the marketplace towards itself. Uh, or in opaque ways towards in different sellers that's not clear or, or that's potentially predatory, that's when you're not really looking at a free market, you're looking at a rigged market. Yeah, well, that's such a good way of putting it is basically like, oh, and now the, mar the marketplace is owned. Like, <laughs> this is not a free marketplace. It's literally owned by this gigantic behemoth, multinational behemoth, and you are all subject to the whims of their rules. They will privilege their own products, et cetera. Question is, is it legal? I mean, look, there's an allegation here that a lobbyist perjured themselves. That's one thing. But if this behavior, if the allegations are actually true, is it illegal? Well, that's the big question. And and I think the one metaphor that we can think about is when this happens in the, in a supermarket chain, it's one thing. And, and people should think about this. When you walk into the supermarket, um, you know, there's you'll see um, the the on label brand of something and then you'll see the generic version you know you go to a, a to a pharmacy you go to a supermarket you'll see you know Rite Aid's version of um, you know Robitussin and then you'll see you know on label Ro Robitussin that happens in the marketplace all the time the issue though is is that Amazon controls such a large proportion of the online marketplace, that that's when questions of monopoly happen. It may be one thing for, you know, and Rite Aid, as an example, control, you know, has a big share of the market, but it arguably doesn't have nearly as big a share of the, of the pharmacy market, let's say, as Amazon has of the online marketplace. So this is not necessarily only about the business practices here. It's about if Amazon is employing these practices, coupled with the fact that Amazon controls effectively so much of the total market, do those two things together represent a violation of antitrust laws? And and of course, you raised the question about you know lying to Congress. That's a that's a a whole set a whole separate thing. Right. But the the monopoly question is: Do those two factors actually require antitrust enforcement? I think there's a good case for it. Yeah, I, th I think so, too. All right, David, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Great to see you, David. Thanks for having me. Of course. Next on Rising, can you guess who Joe Rogan compared to Schoolhouse that's probably going to collapse on? We're going to tell you that when Rising continues.